All right, hello everyone. It is the 12th of December 2023. Today we will be having core inflation rate numbers coming out, right? An hour before the open. And this is going to move the markets for sure. And it doesn't stop there because tomorrow we get the PPI month on month, year on year stuff. And we get FOMC meeting results we get the fast fed interest rate decision and on top of that of course the fed press conference next day retail sales and i think there was something else but no maybe that was it and then what is that the 15th there isn't that much right but that's that's quite a quite a mouthful of things for today and tomorrow in particular. So before I look at the indexes, let's just quickly go through stocks. So Jesse Stein scan, no results. Um, anything then adjusted for unusual volume. This is a bond ETF, not interested. Another bond ETF, not interested. This is a Chinese company. What do they do? Electrical equipment and parts. Every now and so often they do get those volume spikes. They are not really unusual. They spike up, they come back down, they spike up, they come back down. Right? Maybe this time they don't, I don't know. Looks like a range breakout. If you trust Chinese companies and you want to hold them or something, then maybe look at it. Oh, by the way, I should probably read the news first. They're going to get bored. So there's nothing to do here. Never mind. Sorry about that. I should probably always read the news first. Then this one goes in the wrong direction. Wait. Cigna. It's just not really freeing itself up in terms of price action here. The gaps up, but it's still in a, in a range. And not unusual volume at all here, you can say. Macy's is a takeover candidate now, and that's it. There's nothing here. Pre-market, it's still a little bit early. Uh, usually I only record this you know, after uh, 2 p.m. CET, but um, with the macro event coming out, 2.30 CET, an hour before the open, I need the time to do my own trading. So that's why I'm recording this a little bit earlier. Here, there's absolutely nothing to do. There's no gainer with 10% or something. It's just this ridiculous stuff here. And then also on the decliner side, the one that's down, Almost 10% is Oracle. That's a $315 billion market cap company. Um, I would not expect two crazy moves in it. And um, the pre market volume so far is, is not big at all for $100 stock. So there's nothing to do with This can obviously still change. But I guess the best idea is to look at this stuff again after. Um, the pre-market macro event took place just to see how the market is reacting in general, if the market environment is actually conducive to playing individual stocks that have their catalysts. And it's always good when they fit into the market sentiment, right? If you have a terrible, you know, number coming out of the, the inflation realm and the market just drops, then it will be a hard sell to actually go long in something, right, in general. So, yeah. So now let's really focus on what we really do here, which is equity indexes. Um, hourly chart, you can see every block here is one day of price action. Extended trading hours, so we can see everything. So what happened yesterday? Um, the market went higher, obviously. Um, it did not uh, reverse. We had initially drawn a butterfly here. I already deleted it because as soon as I don't need things, I get rid of them, but I can draw them again. We were somewhere here at these levels, right? And we had touched the trigger zone twice. This here was already a 1272, this high here. This here at some point, I guess it went to 1414, etc. We saw this pre-market action 
and then it started coming back. It took out the trigger again. And then I think 1618 was somewhere here. It got taken out. So as I said yesterday, when you have multiple tests of the trigger zone, especially when they undercut um, existing trigger price levels, you have to be extremely uh, careful here. And this is what I, um, what I was. I didn't short anything. I just observed the price action yesterday. We had a very choppy open. The market didn't really want to go anywhere. You can see it a long wicks, even on the hourly chart. And the only trade I posted in the comment section yesterday was an immediate reversal in the NQ. There was a um, there was a daily gap yesterday, and then on the five minute chart. Let me just see if I can find that. Sorry, I think it was right here. Yeah, this is the spot. There was a daily gap here that now got filled because we closed above it. Um, and it touched the, the gap right at the top. Immediate reversal signal here. You can see, and this is not a random candle pair. This happens at a structure level, right? You cannot just take this sort of candle formation, red down, green up, it's almost same body size, and just assume that this will just give you an edge. It doesn't. I back tested this kind of stuff over, you know, a period of three years, you know, like all computerized back testing gives you results within a few minutes. Can do it on a 10 minute chart, five minute chart, doesn't matter. This in itself is not an edge. You have to look at the structure level. So basically, yesterday it was sitting right there. I just imagine this is a daily gap spanning over from the past. And this is what it looked like. So there's a structure here, immediate reversal signal. Then you even get a 50% retracement into this candle pair, which is quite typical for those. They retest it to see if this holds, and then it just goes. Right. This is this is what we had yesterday. It was a good opportunity. I missed it. I did not follow the markets um, after I saw this very choppy open. There was probably a mistake not to do it, but uh, you you live and you learn. That's how it goes. So this one here, called that one right. There was also, I think during the day, also in five minutes, or maybe it was just in the one minute, I can't remember, there was another um, harmonic pattern that suggested a bearish move down. I also did not take it. I waited for price action to see, you know, how it would react at the trigger level if there was really like, a strong volatile move and it never happened and then they broke through 1618 and another you know issue avoided right there if you look at this right now um, this is very interesting because we are at a another daily gap which seems to be kind of like a line in the sand let me just uh, zoom out on the daily you can see that better here we are this is where we are at today we are already we already peaked inside this daily gap. Let me just show you this. I'm I'm actually going to um, deactivate the fair value gap indicator so it doesn't confuse too much. Here it is. There's the daily gap from early August, August first and August second. You can see August second price opened much lower. Then there was a bit of an attempt to close the gap. Didn't work. Just a this wick here and then it went down and never came back didn't come back for months and now we are back there because at some point gaps get filled that's just what happens now now we are testing this this gap there are numerous things obviously that can happen it, it vastly depends on the macro news today we can just test it as we have done and we fail right just the way that I had that drawn here. I just, you know, what I was talking about just now, there was a daily gap here as well. And you can see this still from here. This is where the daily gap was. And now it got closed, right? Because you have the body covering it. Um, but before that, let me just draw it again. Before that, the price action had failed numerous times. Let me just show you this here. See this? It tried it here, 
sorry, even earlier, tried it here, failed, here, failed, poked through it, failed, poked through it again, failed, price eased back, and then they finally ran up and were able to close above it. This is the whole story. So those gaps are relevant. Okay, and this is where we're sitting right now. If you look at an hourly chart, you get this reversal signal again, right? But it's coming out of a sideways, tight pre-market consolidation range. That's not ideal. You typically want to see a bit more swinging, swaying around. And then you obviously have to acknowledge that very soon we will be having the pre-market macro event, which can basically just render this completely useless. So there's nothing to do with this right now. Okay, so that's basically the situation with the daily gap. An interesting target for today's price action, should it really go down that much, um, which I would translate. If this goes down 60 points, we will have a pretty catastrophic, um, you know, macro, you know, news release, right? So for, if for whatever reason, we'll get our core inflation rate completely out of hand and we don't meet the expected 4% here or the 0.3% there um, and we reached all the way down here, then this is a zone to watch, right? This is a long wick hourly candle and those tend to get filled. So you can fill it. You can think of them like daily gaps. Sooner or later, price returns to them because price action was way too quick here. Right? It, it went down, it went back up. It didn't stay in the place. There wasn't a lot of you know, trading volume um, repeatedly taking place here. It's just very quick. And the market is thorough. It likes to come back to those levels and retest them. And looking at the chart with the daily gap and this candidate here, my bias is I'm, I'm cautious. I will wait and see how the macro news are being received but there is a real chance that the macro news will actually have price go down quite a bit today it's a possibility right just looking at the presence of the gap and this long week candle is is all that i'm utilizing for for this kind of assumption it is difficult to draw extensions here. Why? If I anchor that here and I go back here, I have missed the low already. I'm already further ahead here. I cannot connect this low. It should have the high before the low. Then it would be very easy. Then you could have a FIP extension or FIP projection into the... Um, the daily gap that would be very very helpful but we don't have that here because we just cannot draw it properly okay and this is what it looks like right now so what else can we do again it might not help much because of the um, macro news obviously we can draw fit range there's your 618 or your 50 percent maybe this will be tested with news coming out i would assume it will it will probably reach down initially um, easily by 10 15 points maybe and then go up and that's basically all all there is really if we start failing way more then we can draw a larger fib range of the most recent updates those three updates here. We can anchor it down here. Then we can see what happens here, which would be interesting because, again, you can see where this guy is. However, let's just assume we don't go up much more. We would end up here, right? I would not buy this here because of the presence of this wick. I would not even buy 786 here because we might just even close below it. Right? It's just interesting to observe it then, but I would personally not do anything. This goes way too deep here. All right, so there's nothing to draw, 
right now. There are no harmonic patterns here. We can um, take a look at, let's see, in Q, which of course is not much different. Draw that again, see what it does. Also, long wick down here, right? It's going to be aware of that. We're just going to draw that as well. And you can see that we are basically pretty high up, but we could easily just go higher, right? There's there's no rule that says now it has to fail. Right? You're getting pretty close to all time highs. Take a look at the YM. Let's have a few um, daily gaps left down here, but I don't think there's there's anything above. I checked that already. I didn't find much. Or anything and you can see what it looks like right so going here also to an hourly chart you can do your drawing but i'm not going to be that interested in it right? because i'm more looking at the s than q let's see why contract change um is um going to happen well actually today let me just see no tomorrow today at 1800 right yeah and then it will roll over before that, i'm not doing anything i'm not even really want to look at this that much it's always a bit delayed with the rollover of the contract but i think they're already oh, oh, i was just lagging I was like, what's, why is this not loading more data? Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We can look at DXY, daily chart. It's easing back from yesterday. I think we had a little bit drawn here. Um, but now it's a new day, so I'm not using that anymore. Right. It's only the previous day that I want to look at. I don't know what this is here. Um, and obviously with, with yesterday, let me just try to reload this chart. This looks weird and sluggish. It's there. I don't know why that is. So this is yesterday, um, fairly tight price action. So we cannot really draw anything here. Right, right now it's easy. So the Euro is is strengthening a little bit here. Let's see if that continues to go higher. That's what the daily chart looks like. Once you get used to this or not, this one looks like, right? Uh, we interesting. We, we we saw the six one eight here. Uh, sorry, the um, the point five. This is not right though. We bounced off six one eight, didn't we? Why is this why is this different? That's kind of weird. Anyways, maybe it's also some genre of adjustment or whatever. I don't trade forex. I don't know what that why that is here. Oh no, wait, the six one eight was here. I apologize. That's why. Got me confused. No, it's all good. So the idea is that the bounce might actually happen here at some point, or maybe already here. And then maybe it goes down again. Okay, the VIX, nothing new to report here, it's just really low. Gold, back to $2,000. This is an idea, I have gold, but you have to ignore the wick. Let's see if some buying comes in here. This one looks like. 
So this pattern is done. This is why the wick is here. Right? This pattern is done. You can delete that. And now we are looking at a new pattern and see what happens down here. And oil is continuing to be pretty weak. Nothing much else to say really about it. Sometimes we'll get two-minute charts for previous sessions, see if there were any harmonics that can give you very, very tight entries. But it seems to me there wasn't anything. But I'm not actively looking at gold or oil these days. Not interested. Okay, what else? Yeah, I can only encourage everybody to look at the community tab. I post um, screenshots every day of identified market setups. I think that's a great resource to learn. Trading school playlist is always a good resource, especially for the harmonic patterns, um, where I quickly explain every pattern out of these, these four patterns. There are more patterns out there in the world, but um, I don't care about the other ones. I'm just interested in those four ones. I'm most, mostly interested in the butterfly. Um, and this, this stuff alone that I'm sharing in that playlist, uh, other people charge you thousands of dollars for this. Thousands. So making it available for free, you're welcome. And unfortunately, you know, you, you can have a YouTube channel where you present a lot of ideas, a lot of concepts for free, which again, other people would charge you an arm and a leg for. And you still get comments that um, I don't even want to share, right? It's, uh, it's very pathetic sometimes. So, but that's, uh, that's social media, which is then not very social sometimes. Um, but I can only wonder why people complain on really rare occasions, but you know, every now and then you get a hate comment and you're wondering why, right? You just move on. If you don't want free stuff that is worth, you know, like a lot of money, if you have to buy it somewhere and there are a lot of scammers out there, YouTube is full with scammers. 99% of those trading channels are all scam channels. If you want to spend money on uh, information that turns out to be completely useless, uh, then good luck, right? You go ahead and do that. And I share information here that you can really utilize in your trading um, that has merit. And still, there are some people sometimes who just think they can just troll around. Maybe they, ever, they never even looked at the playlist, right? Anyways. That's what it is. So I'm just waiting for the inflation numbers. And the idea is basically always the same. The idea is essentially to say, okay, if if I get a, a strong reaction, let's just let's just do this. Let's just say I get a negative reaction today. So I get like a long bear bar like this right let's say that's on a five minute chart get a long bear bar you know the numbers come out and the market just races down you can also imagine there are some wicks here but the wicks shouldn't be that big it should really a solid body where the market really says i'm just going to push this down now if i want to short this because this is what the market is saying you need to short it you know, this is the big initial move. You have to look at the actual inflation rate and you have to understand if this was really a big surprise. We have to compare it to expectations. You see the expectations here, 4% for year on year and 0.3% for month on month. Now, let's just say we get an inflation rate of 5%. That's obviously a big surprise, right? Um, then you get a, a sharp initial reaction. And then hopefully, and this is where it gets interesting, you get the next bar as a smaller bar. And it should still be trending. 
Now it's going to be really hard to grab this, this little thing here. Let's make it bigger. So let's say you get something like this, right? This is the follow through. And it should be follow through. And now it's most likely much smaller after the initial shock, right? But then there is, um, what is it called? News drift, right? So initial reaction a little bit here. And then you get a lot of smaller candles probably into the main session until the end of day. And they will just chop and chop around and just, you know, follow this direction. That's when you get a real surprise macro event. That's usually what the market does. Right. So your chances to short it here, put your stop there and hope you don't get stopped out because you cannot put a stop here. The, the risk is so big, you have to scale down with your number of contracts you want to trade that it's almost not worth trading it. You have to use something like this and hope that it works out. And then what you can typically do, you can measure only the body though, only the body. Let's just assume there are no wicks here, right? So only measure the body and then you can clone this measurement and put it here and then you can assume that price will hit this. Now, some people might try to front run this a little bit. There's nothing wrong with it. Better safe than sorry, most people will tell you. And that's okay. All right, so I'm waiting for any macro, re macro releases of magnitude. Inflation stuff used to be labor market, uh, sorry, job market. Um, you know, when, when you could, or interest rate decisions, right, or FMC or whatever. I would wait for a big surprise in numbers. I want to see this initial also big market reaction. And then I have to find an entry point. Right. And then measure this and see if we can get there. And this takes a lot of patience and discipline. It's not a given that we'll go there. But a lot of algos, when they see these surprising moves, they will just project um the target just down there this is how this works right and obviously vice versa if this is on the bullish side you just have to flip everything and then you know you can use that that's the only stuff i'm interested in why because if you if you want to trade the binary event without knowing what the, the outcome of the binary event is this is just playing with fire the initial market reaction can be so strong you cannot get out at a defined entry or stop um, you will lose way more money than you had projected because you don't get the fills in the initial strong reaction. They just skip auctions, right? They just jump back and forth with the pricing. And so you have to wait until the dust has settled a little bit and then it becomes obvious basically to everybody who trades this properly that the market will just continue to go the initial way. There's also no guarantee for that. Everything can happen in the markets. But the likelihood is there, right? That this will actually follow through. So just want to share this little detail. And with that, good luck trading and talk to you tomorrow. Bye.